I will wait for a few minutes for people to start um, joining the webinar. Hello everyone, we'll wait for a few more minutes to see for people to join um, and we'll start very shortly. we can start. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Fuat Demir from the University of Oklahoma Center for Peace and Development, the Department of Economics and also the Security in Context Network. The Center for Peace and Development's mission is to advance knowledge of local peace building efforts and to work alongside local civil society organizations committed to bottom-up community transformation. The Security in Context is an interdisciplinary research and pedagogy initiative that promotes critical research and policy analysis around key questions related to peace and conflict, political economy, development, and militarism. For those of you who would like to explore both centers further, further please visit our websites at ou.edu backslash cpd and securityincontext.com. Our distinguished guest today is Selim Nakipolu, who is a human rights lawyer in Istanbul. She received her public law master's degree from Bristol University and the Academy of European Law, and her specialization is gender and human rights. Selim is currently working for the Mor Chetze Women's Shelter Foundation in Turkey and has also worked in the past for the Hurriyet Emergency Helpline. She works extensively on women's and children, children's rights against gender discrimination in Turkey and is a vocal public speaker to raise awareness and to fight against gender-based violence in Turkey. We will have the curious question and answer during the last 15 to 20 minutes of our talk, uh, but please feel free to post your questions during the lecture using the Q&A window during the talk. The chat window will be disabled, so please do use the Q&A uh, window to post any questions you may have. We will have the recording available on our website and the YouTube channel shortly after the webinar. Um, the title of her talk today is Women's Rights, Gender Discrimination and Power in Turkey. And dear Selin, welcome. Uh, glad to have you uh, here with, with our um, other guests. And before further ado, the camera is yours. Thank you very much, uh, dear Fırat. And uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, I wish everyone uh, have a nice day. Um, I'm Selin from Istanbul. I, be, I have been a lawyer. Uh, I have been lawyer 20 years working on a combat male violence uh, against women and children. Um, I will tell you a little about developments uh, regarding male violence in Turkey. But first of all, I would like to inform you about the Purple Roof Women's Shelter Foundation uh, in Turkish we call Morçatı which I am a member of it. Morçatı uh, Women's uh, Shelter Foundation is 
pioneering an independent feminist organization that has been active in the field of combating violence against women since uh, for the women subjected to any form of violence. Uh, not only physical violence, just any form of violence. Morchette was uh, founded in 1990 in uh, Istanbul by women uh, who led the march against beating. In 1987 uh, is a milestone in a uh, feminist movement in her story in Turkey. Uh, Morchette is the first feminist organization and first women's solidarity center in Turkey. And it's registered, uh, re registered a foundation and the founders were feminist women with various uh, professionals, uh, doctors, lawyers, uh, psychologists, etc., and backgrounds. And some of them are still active on the work uh, of Morchata. Uh, Morchata is a volunteer-based organization with a limited number of paid staff. Um, to date, uh, over 40,000 women and children have received support from our Solidarity Center. More than 1,000 women and children stayed in the shelter of Morchata. An average of uh, 15 women are assisted every day on the phone, via email, or in a person to person. Uh, in 2021, 1,000 507 women and children were provi provided support in Morchette Solidarity Center and 29 women and children were provi pro uh, provided shelter support. The shelter support is an uh, important point of this. Uh, Morchette Solidarity, uh, Solidarity Center bases um, its work on the uh, premise of building women's solidarity against violence and sharing in a common struggle, not helping women. Uh, it's important. It's not helping women, uh, women in need. Uh, uh, and women most often, uh, often uh, come to Morchata in order to talk about what they have been through and support. Um, and uh, they also obtain legal, psychological, and shelter support if they so require. Uh, Mochete uh, runs the only independent shelter, women's shelter in Turkey, the only independent, independent from government, independent from everywhere. And uh, uh, we, we never take money from government and, um, uh, and the capacity of 25 uh, women, it's, it's a, uh, not so big, unfortunately, and the children and babies. Uh, our uh, shelter uh, work aims uh, keeping sustainability, uh, sustainability of the shelter as a model for women's shelters, that in terms of demonstrating the effectiveness um, in addition to our work, uh, Solidarity Center and Shelter, in addition to this, we transform and share knowledge and experiences we gather directly from women and children who encounter with barriers in their struggle uh, by in integrating them into a political discourse and demands in order to make it resonate with, uh, with the society as well as reach out decision policy makers. In light of the information acquired from women and experience brought by working in the field, uh, working in the field is uh, uh, very important at that point. Uh, we identify both what pro-women changes need, need to be enacted in legislation and shortcomings in the implementation of existing law. Uh, in order to overcome these shortcomings in implementation, we monitor uh, and, and evaluate, yes, evaluate the work and politics of uh, public agencies that have roles and responsi responsibilities in combating violence against women, uh, submitting information 
request to do so. Our findings resulting from such monitoring and evaluation processes and shared with the public in an effort to put pressure on public authorities. Uh, in, in Turkey, it's very important, I mean, to put in pressure in public authorities or governments. Uh, reports at the current situation uh, are also sent to international monitoring mechanisms such as CEDAW, ECHR, UN Committee on the Rights of the Child, for instance. I, uh, yes, I have had to, uh, you know, for the motion and now they are, there are uh, realities we have to face to in Turkey. Uh, the position or the positionlessness of women, which has been uh, going on for, for centuries, as you know, and is per, uh, per, uh, perhaps the biggest problem of humanity. The fact that men played a greater role in the wars that took place in the later stages of history due, due to physical uh, inadequacy uh, in, in, in and hunting and gathering at the beginning of humanity created impressions that men are stronger than women and women's lack and this situation continues, continues. However, society is shaped according to beliefs, customs, traditions, uh, but rules determined by whom, by whom and according to what, uh, have overtuned the female, female figure day by day. It's even higher with the rules and also with the dominant male dominance. Uh, it becomes to Turkey as a subject. Uh, for example, there are still people in our country who judge uh, women by the way we dress, uh, by the way mini skirts, by the way mini shorts, etc. cetera. Uh, while sharing the same life, there are still those among us who try to put the housework, which they call the duty of the woman and the care of the children, the care of the old people uh, on women, even though they both work under the same conditions. Uh, in addition to this, there are women who are paid less than hiring or promoted just because they are women. Uh, those who are impossible, um, uh, for example, to be managers, those who are welcome to give birth, uh, those who are dismissed if they are pregnant, uh, those who are prosecuted for not getting married, and those who are questioned why they are divorced. Worse still, cases of violence against women, harassment, rape, and murder are, uh, are still seen in our country. I will give you uh, the data later. And let's look the political background of our struggle because it's very uh, direct, uh, it's uh, with our struggles um, um, parameters. In Turkey, thanks to the women efforts uh, of the refor reforms uh, in the civil court, our civil court uh, 22, and the penal court to, uh, 20, 20, for women's acu acuity and independence was achieved in legal terms, it's, it's okay. Uh, yet the last uh, decade uh, has witnessed a shift away from gender equality towards family-oriented policies. Um, there is a lack of will uh, by the states to achieve gender equality and to prevent violence against, against women. Um, just because specifically in, uh, 20, since 2010, uh, public officers and people in decision-making positions have started to voice their opinions openly and argue that there is no such thing as gender equality and men and women cannot be accused. Uh, the, um, Erdogan was prime minister at that, that time and he just said that 
uh, with a with a huge meeting full of um, uh, women, and he just said to us, Sarah, I don't believe uh, gender equality and men and women cannot be accused. He just said to our faces. And then everything uh, is going very badly in Turkey. Meanwhile, in uh, 29, uh, the European Court of Human Rights announced a judgment, its judgment uh, in Opus, Opus versus Turkey case. It's an important case for us because it's the basement of Istanbul Convention, this case, Opus versus Turkey, for falling to uh, protect a woman and her mother from attacks uh, perpetrated by the woman's husband. The decision marked the first time the important point is this, the first time the court recognized that the failure of states to address gender-based violence can amount to a form of discrimination. Opus case uh, is um, one of the basis uh, of the Istanbul Convention that it led the Turkish government uh, to rush to be first country to sign and ratify the convention. Uh, in uh, 2012, the domestic law, uh, law no 6284, uh, was enacted in accordance with the Istanbul Convention. Everything was perfect at that time. Although these were the promising developments for the women in uh, Turkey, uh, in the very same year, uh, then the Prime Minister Erdogan announced that he believes abortion is murder, and he also said I am he against uh, C-section, and uh, the uh, outrage of women stopped any changes on the abortion law, which enables women to terminate the pregnancy within ten weeks. Uh, however, in practice, uh, the public hospitals refused performing uh, the abortion. In this case is the one of the early examples of widening gap between the laws and implement implementation, which leaves women and women's rights activists uh, at a position of having to prove themselves all the time against the denial of the government. Yes, it's, uh, it's a big struggle. Uh, and in May uh, 2016, with the Divorce Commission report, and a report written by a Parliament Commission in Turkey, Turkish Parliament Commission, and the family-oriented policies become more constrained. Um, this report uh, included, included implementation of constellation in cases of divorce and uh, valued the unity of the family over women's lives in cases of violence. This meant insufficient or limited, limited resources allocated for uh, women's issues, while the women are publicly uh, treated as non equal in the individuals or citizens uh, confined within the family uh, and solely as mothers. Uh, the, being a mother <laughs> is very important in Turkey, the, but not being a woman. The effect of this approach has easily uh, been uh, detected in the bad practices by the states of officials. Women have been exploiting difficulties in accessing their rights uh, exact exercise by the institutions such as law enforcement officers, family courts, prosecutors, the violence prevention uh, monitoring centers. The violence prevent, uh, prevention monitoring centers has uh, established with uh, women uh, 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 court, which we call uh, 6284 and uh, who are required to support women. Uh, nevertheless, there are no 
sanctions against these bad practices. The gap between law and its implementation continues to loom large and monitoring efforts are now even more pressing. And um, let's see legal backgrounds and implementations problems, uh, because I, I mentioned it a, a lot. Uh, the law now, uh, 6284, uh, uh, the law to protect family and prevent violence against women, uh, was adopted in 20, uh, 20, uh, 2012 and uh, the accordance with the requirements in of the Istanbul Convention, which was uh, ratified the year before. Um, this law uh, regulates the measures to be taken to protect women, children, family members, and stalking victims subjected to or at risk of violence and prevent any violence from being directed against them. The measures include shelter support, temporary uh, clothes protection, uh, burying and restraining order, and um, confi uh, confidentiality order, change of identity, the change of identity is a very, very, very hard, uh, but uh, some women uh, really need it. Temporary eliminati, custody, and, and also financial support. The law appoints um, violence prevention, prevention and monitoring centers as the responsible body for coordination of these measures and support for the women and children. Uh, law and so enforcement officials are authorized to refer women to shelters, provide temporary protection, and file burying and restricting um, re orders. Family courts are assigned to issue burying, con uh, confidentiality order, temporary alimony, and custody. According to the law 6284, uh, women who escape from violence can apply to the nearest police station uh, in order to request a shelter, a restraining order, a, a, a confidentiality order to financial aid, etc. And the police officers are uh, obliged to accept these requests without asking for any kind of proof. This is the main uh, discussion in Turkey. Uh, any proof, uh, most of men, they said, uh, we need proof because uh, what maybe is she implies she's lying, etc. But uh, the law no uh, 6284 needs no proof. Uh, however, the implementations of these law, laws prove otherwise. And uh, experiences of women who have applied to Morchata show that uh, women are falsely informed or not informed at all when they apply to law as former officers, that they are deceived from making an official complaint forced to show evidence that officers seek to reconcile them with the perpetrator of violence, it's very dangerous, and when all such strategies fail, that their complaints are not officially recorded. Even though the law states that women who are survivors of physical, sexual, psychological, or economical, economic violence are provi provided necessarily support services in shelter, admittance, and discrimination is uh, carried out of the basis of age, disability studies, citizenship statutes, statute, and type of violence. In joint uh, meetings, we have attended uh, the, um, the Shunim, we, we call Shunim, and the, the Violence Prevention and Monitoring Centers, uh, in Turkish we call Shunim. Uh, we, the center's officials we have attended openly shared information that they did not accept women 
subjected to psychological violence to the shelter. Why psychological uh, violence is a violence too, but they said like this. Besides, uh, it is also now that medical reports proving phys uh, physical violence have been demanded for shelter. Admit Admit, uh, admittance. It's it's it, it's it's not true. It's um, against law. I mean, in regards to the pre uh, preventive uh, decisions, judgments um, are often given for short duration uh, time, such as two weeks or two months, uh, which are not enough and uh, effective protect for survivors. Uh, we. Uh, the court said you can give preventive uh, decisions uh, for six months. It's very important, but mm, it's very short durations. I mean, such as two weeks, one month, etc. And furthermore, and the women state uh, that they are facing difficulties increasingly to obtain. Uh, these de decisions and these decisions are also delayed. In addition to this, um, according to the law, now 6284, decisions do not come into force before they are ser served to the perpetrator. If law and uh, informants officers do not urgently serve the decision, uh, uh, if there uh, is any other delay in reaching the perpetrator, the decision is not in fact proceed for a significant part of the duration. Critical difficulties continue to be experienced and the implementation of uh, orders as well and causing women to be uh, read to traumatized and when trying to obtain confidently, uh, confidentiality orders. Um, and um, I have to add, risk, uh, risk um, ass assessment is reduced uh, to filling standards, uh, 12 pages, form and unique needs and conditions of women are not monitored to assess the possible upcoming risks. Violence prevention and monitoring centers, we call Shonim, do not monitor the implementation and confidentiality orders in all institutions that put the safety of women and their children at risk. Since confidentiality orders are issued um, only for temporary periods, women must constantly renew such orders by repeatedly applying to court survivors. But survivors need to face the complicated uh, prosecutors. This is also uh, causes women uh, to experience secondary trauma and repeatedly telling their stories to people who are not experts. It's a, it's a very bad situation and uh, it's a secondary trauma. And uh, there's a lack of expert hotline in violence against women in Turkey, which is noted as a shortcoming in many national and international reports. Um, uh, there's a government's hotline, it's uh, ALO uh, 183, uh, yes, but we have this, but it's not specific, the issue of violence of women and works as an information line or call center rather than an emergency help line that provides services for women's unique needs. That's why it's useless. Uh, lastly, in Turkey, uh, there is still no effective social services network. Um, violence prevention and monitoring centers that were established uh, for this purpose, purpose do not function effectively. Uh, Shonims cannot function as information centers uh, on the issue of domestic violence. Ex ex existing social networks do not have enough specialists uh, to deal with survivors of dom domestic violence, enable to empower and en enable to women to set up new lives. Uh, thus, the system does not uh, address the needs for domestic violence survivors. Uh, women can receive 
uh, assistance only in specified social services, the prosecutor of uh, administrators to the shelter take a long time and uh, women who need urgent advice are unable to receive in it due time. Withdrawal from the Istanbul Convention, uh, I want to mention about uh, it because, you know, in Turkey, uh, it's, it, it's a big deal. To, um, we call shortly Istanbul Convention because uh, which is signed in Istanbul, but the whole name, the Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence. As I said, uh, also known as Istanbul Convention, was adopted uh, by the Committee of Ministers of Council of Europe uh, on April uh, 2011. The Convention uh, entered uh, into force on August. Uh, 2014 uh, and has currently been ratified uh, 24 states. Uh, this convention con uh, constitutes a crucial development as regards uh, the, movement, the uh, movement to combat gender-based violence as it sets new legally binding standards in this area. Istanbul Convention is an important frame, the very important framework for the elimination of violence against women. Turkey officially withdrew from the Istanbul Convention, of which it was first signatory on uh, 1st July uh, 2021. Uh, withdrawal from the Istanbul Convention is the result of ongoing attacks to women's vested rights and demand for equality. The withdrawal uh, is also illegal uh, in its method of relying only to, to the decision of the president without any discussion in our parliament. It's also illegal. After the withdrawal decision, many different women and human rights groups and uh, as a, a woman, I'm, I also uh, go to a lawsuit, a group sealed a lawsuit at the Council of State uh, to halt and overturn this decision. But the demand for halting the decision has been rejected by the Council of State, unfortunately. Uh, this, the discussion uh, around Istanbul Convention caused a strong reaction against the withdrawal. Uh, women organization stated uh, at this decision uh, is a declaration that Turkish state has no will to protect women against male violence. And it paves the, uh, it paves the way for injustice on sexual crimes and will encourage perpetrators. And uh, the other uh, issue is um, um, uh, um, ongoing impunity and example cases in Turkey. Uh, the uh, continuous problem regarding the application of law in criminal courts uh, is the impunity of perpetrators of domestic violence, as the European Court of Human Rights uh, puts forth in the, as I mentioned before, Opus versus Turkey judgment. Um, there is impunity for perpetrators who commit domestic violence. If health, health condition of the survivor is not life threatening, or for example, after the beating or bodily harm done by perpetrator, the sentence given to, uh, given to perpetrator only up uh, to five years. And if, if, uh, if the perpetrator has no previous criminal record, then he is subjected to uh, re re option uh, or and sentence is converted to cash fine and uh, he's arrested for the time being. Uh, if the criminal act uh, considered as life treating harm, then the sentence time can be at the time increased, but the perpetrator is still not arrested. Uh, that's why uh, I call it ongoing impunity. And uh, the, the, these examples uh, uh, is, uh, unfortunately, it's uh, 
not good for the uh, for our struggle. And uh, uh, if the medical, for instance, the, the other point is medical report. If the medical report, uh, he beaten me and I need a medical report, but uh, the medical report examining the situation uh, of survivor states, she is in life-threatening condition. Only then the perpetrator is arrested during the prosecution process. In many of the femi uh, femicide cases, perpetrators benefit from the matter of uh, mitigation, which is which are usually the reasons such as alderity, not fulfilling women's duties as, as such. And uh, in the cases of sexual attacks and child abuse, and the perpetrators are not sentenced if they do, decision is dismissed uh, the higher court. There are many cases of femicide, uh, sexual attacks, and child abuse discussed on Twitter, unfortunately, which made uh, the argument searching for justice uh, on Twitter. It's, uh, it suggests that justice uh, in the court is impossible if you don't create a very strong public outrage. Uh, even the cases that are uh, campaigned on Twitter, unfortunately. Uh, the justice system uh, may fail, might fail. Uh, for example, Gulistan Doku. Gulistan uh, was a young woman and has been missing since January 2020. And uh, the prime suspect and his family uh, have not been uh, uh, educated in crime. And uh, the, sub the suspect and his family have left the city after the uh, incident and nothing has been done. Gulistan uh, Doku has been missing yet. I don't know, we don't know what happened. And in other case, Yüksel Koç is a, a man, abused his daughter for nine years. And uh, the uh, forensic report documented to abuse. However, the court uh, acquitted the perpetrator of abuse due to the lack of evidence, lack of evidence. But on the other way, uh, the, there is a uh, child, there is a uh, girl, nine years old. Aleyna Çakır is a, another famous case in Turkey, which is perpetrator, uh, Ümit Can, is accused of sexual attack and murder, is uh, released, the trial is ongoing months later. Uh, Ümit Can uh, sexually attacked and killed another woman. Uh, um, as I come towards the end, there are some points I would like to add. Um, the patriarchal approach uh, to the state. Um, the government claims in Turkey uh, the not tolerance policy to violence against women, but there is a strong sexist Islamic approach to the status of women. This approach could be traced to speeches by the government officials in the official communication messages, unfortunately. Hence, the gender equality is de uh, denounced and the unity of the family uh, valued over women's, uh, um, women's emancipation. The messages against violence against women is far from the dynamics of violence. For example, a video by Ministry of Family and Social Services uh, commissions for the International Day for the Elimination of Violence suggests mercy. <laughs> The mercy is the solution to violence against women. This approach fixes women as needy and weak. Uh, stabilize, uh, stabilize, um, man dominance and urges to accept this inequality to fix the problem with the conscious. 
the recent uh, approach of government is taking a moral approach to the problem of violence against women, which leads uh, to unsecular uh, solutions. Governments on equality and pro-family approach uh, motivates the bad practices of the officials and cause uh, prostitution of family over the emancipation of women. And now uh, um, I want to show you some data. Before that, uh, I would like to drop a, a note. In these days, when the election atmosphere in Turkey, uh, Turkey is, is um, it, it's rising day by day, despite relatively less coverage in the media due to the earthquake agenda, but the violence uh, of rights against LGBTI plus in March uh, revealed the depth of discrimination and hatred, unfortunately. To understand the big picture, we need, we need to see the women behind statics. We need to see and truly really understand that the women who now are dead by the hands of men in Turkey once were alive human beings uh, who will be missed by their families. And now I want to show you some data. Uh, uh, the March report. Uh, in March, uh, 23 women were killed by men and 19 women were found dead under suspicious circumstances. Uh, last year, uh, uh, 334 women ki killed by men and three, uh, two, four, five women found dead under suspicious circumstances. Under suspicious circumstances is a very big question mark why uh, they they are that why how, how they that and uh, who whom uh, by uh, i mean this yes by whom were the women killed how were the women killed how old were, were the women killed we, we don't know any data this data is from um, women uh, foundations or more, more like more chatter and like uh, like platforms, human platforms, they are collecting data. Uh, let me see the, um, yes, by who were the women killed in March? Nine were killed by their husbands, four by their boyfriends, two by ex-boyfriends, two by their son, two by and acutance, uh, one by relative and one by her ex-husband. Ex-husband, lots of ex-husband. Women were mostly killed in their homes. Uh, it, it's a big deal. And uh, yes, 16 of the women were killed in their homes, in the middle of the street, in a hotel, in a workplace. Uh, Yes, we are killing from that uh, that we know. The women were mostly killed with the sharp objects. Uh, fire, firearm is the most objects that we uh, read. 12 of the women killed in this month, month were killed with a sharp object. Suspicious deaths of women in Turkey, is, the number is, increases every day by day. And there is a um, significant uh, increase in the number of suspicious deaths uh, of women presented as suicides or national deaths. And uh, in the number of women who were found suspicious, uh, suspicious that during the pandemic, especially during the pandemic, the, the, the number is increased a lot. And uh, they, uh, the, uh, the government says nothing about it. This subject. Unfortunately, shedding light on the suspicious deaths of women can be even more difficult than femicides uh, because they close the 
a file easily. It's, it's necessary to reveal whether women were killed, whether they were killed by accident, whether women were killed on the basis of gender, whether they committed suicide or whether they were driven to suicide. They were driven to suicide. It's hard to prove this, hard to prove this, that point, um, but suspicious deaths of women numbers uh, is getting bigger in Turkey. Uh, this is the, the names of women. Uh, Nur, Nurcan Gülden was found dead, naked in her bed. By whom? We don't know. And uh, the body of a baby girl was found garbage storage facility. By whom? We don't know. In Ankara, a woman was found in a lake. In Sirt, uh, died suspiciously uh, after falling from a rocky cliff. Um, in, in, our, in Ankara, uh, Dagmara Veronica Erol was found dead in her home. Love and Sportsman officials state that she had been shot with a rifle. In Shanlurfa, Aysel was shot dead by her son. And uh, in Diyarbakır, a uh, 19 year old, year old visually impaired Fatma Gül died after falling from her balcony. We, we are <laughs> every day. We are, we are reading uh, after falling balcony with the very, very young women. Why? By whom? The government doesn't say anything. We ask of, oftenly, but they said nothing to us. Izmir, 19 year old, Nazlı, mother of one, died in a fire in her house. The man was married, the man, uh, she was married to stated he entered the house to save Nazlı and their son, but he couldn't save Nazlı. Uh, here are the stories of the life struggles of the uh, women, in, women killed in March. Uh, it's a lot of stories and uh, I want to just say their names uh, because they had life and Zülfiye, Aslı, Yeliz, Tuba, Miray, Buse, Tülay, Sabriye, Gaye, Arzu, Aysel, Ebru, Rabia, Elena, Ümide, Yağmur, Zehra. And by whom were the women killed? Uh, here are the percentages and uh, persons of four persons and relatives. And uh, the man she used to be married to, the man she was married to, ex-husband. I want to divorce you. Uh, you can't divorce me. Then we don't know why, but uh, they choose to kill the woman. And uh, uh, when they go to court, they said, because she, wanted to divorce me. And the judge said to him, okay, you can go to uh, court, uh, family court, and you can divorce. Why did you kill her? You, you know, the, the huge percentage of this. How were the women killed? With a sharp object, with firearms. The percentage of firearms is very high because it's very, easy in Turkey uh, the, uh, to find a firearm. Um, how old were the women? They, they are very, very young. Uh, you know, the person just 36 and 65 years old, the fourth person, it's very young women. Were the women employed? Unknown. And this is the problem, unknown. Why unknown? <clears throat> because uh, the Turkish government is uh, very poor of uh, collecting data. Did the women have uh, the, mm, the court 
6284 protection order, unknown. The big person is unknown. Why? Why did why the why don't you collect the data? It's very easy to know this because you have the identity number, and when you uh, search every when you search identity number, everything can uh, can be written by you. Why you don't know? We ask always the government. And they say nothing. Uh, yes, in March last month, the loss of women has killed by men in Turkey and also LGBTI plus uh, people were killed. Uh, even earthquake, even very uh, big problems, it doesn't matter. The, the man violations number is getting higher and higher, unfortunately. And uh, at that time, uh, as feminists, being a feminist lawyer, it's very hard to me, of course, because the 20 years I am struggling with this. But uh, uh, in this, in this uh, picture, I can't quit. That's why um, uh, this is the situation of, Turkish um, uh, law prosecution and also uh, political struggle. And this, that's why the elections is the, will be the next month will be very important for us because women rights and, um, and gender discrimination is going very back to AKP's time and is uh, 22 years is a very long time. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Selin, for, for a great conversation. We have a few questions from, from our audience, but I've used my privilege and we have a few minutes left. I have one question to, to uh, perhaps to further explore or, or articulate. Under the current government, which has been in power for now 20 plus years, um, there is an increasing escalation of attacks on women over time. Uh, a good example is International Women's Day celebrations, for example, or protests, which was freely celebrated or open to public for decades. Uh, and for the last several years, there's an open attack by the security forces on women who are trying to meet together on the Women's Day in March and, and in solidarity voice their opinions. And the images this year, for example, from the International Women's Day was metro and public transportation networks were suspended to the Taksim Square area where the protests would take place. And the police attacked the protesters with pepper spray. Uh, and that was open violence that international news media also broadcasted widely. How do you explain this increasing hostility and, uh, and perhaps fear from women under the current government? Is it related to political Islam? Is it changes in dynamics, including the withdrawal from the Istanbul Agreement? Like what are some of the, the cues do you think that could explain for our viewers the, this changing attitude? Yes, uh, from the 2019, is a very, some, something has changed about four, four, four years, in fact, uh, because uh, before four years, we can go to Taksim Square and uh, everything was okay no police uh, violation or something else, but it's getting worse, getting worse. And, and the government um, um, has noticed that only the women uh, is being struggling with the government in Turkey. Everything, everybody has, has a silence except women. That's why uh, the government has um, the, uh, very tough to us for four years uh, about uh, you know November and March you know the two days we are uh, all together to squires and um, the police is a very very um, tough with very big deal I mean uh, the police tended to catch a woman uh, last November and kicked her head 
it's, it's a crime. It's a big crime. That's why. Um, but uh, it's, it will be changed. It will be changed after the uh, elections, I hope. Another question from the ground. So um, I will read it. Today in our bioethics class, we discussed about abortion. I want to know that parental rights about this situation, who decides to end pregnancy in Turkey, and what are the matern maternal rights regarding abortion access and family planning in Turkey? Mm -hmm. uh, until 10 uh, weeks, uh, uh, the couples uh, decide, can decide the end of pregnancy. Uh, no, let let me tell you. If a woman is a single or married, it's changed. If if you are a married woman, you have to go to the doctor with your husband, because uh, he, uh, the doctor he or she asks your husband, uh, okay, is is okay, abortion is okay for you, and uh, if you are a single woman, you can go to hospitals uh, until. 10 months is legal and uh, the abortion uh, uh, can be uh, you can abortion you can uh, they can take the baby but the uh, AKPs um, politic, politic um, changes uh, uh, yes 10 years before they say no the abortion is illegal we, we ask why <laughs> the, the criminal court is the written in our criminal court. How can you say this? No, abortion is um, is not suitable for our religion. Yes, maybe, I don't know, but it's suitable for our criminal court. And until 10 months, huh, in order to, is the situation which she raped is until 20 months. It's written. But no, and uh, uh, he was the prime minister at that time, and uh, everybody has uh, stopped uh, to get to do abortions. And we were calling hospitals, just like um, I'm a woman, I want to uh, end it, uh, my pregnancy, blah, blah, blah. They said to me, no, 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 abortion is illegal. We, we, we don't not do this. Why? Because of the prime minister's speech. At that time, yes, the abortion is very, very uh, hard. And uh, it, it, um, for four to 11 years. Before, it was not a problem. It was really not a problem. But parental rights uh, about this situation, yes, if you are married, you have to go to doctor with your husband. And your husband has to say yes, otherwise, you can't do this because of the uh, maternal rights. Uh, second question is about the Istanbul Convention. Um, after the election, in the case the current government loses the elections, uh, can the new parliament of Turkey re-enter or re-sign, become a part signatory on the uh, convention? And what are the chances, do you think, for that to happen? Yes, we will apply and sign that convention again. No doubt, I'm very sure because uh, because it, because it's a very very uh, important regulation. Uh, you you can't deny this regulation if you want to struggle with men against women, children, or LGBTI first. That's why. Uh, I'm sure that um, after elections, the new government will apply and sign that again. Not, it's not enough. Signing is enough? No, of course. Uh, for instance, it's, it's a lot of obligations that uh, conventions, convention gives to uh, states. For instance, uh, rape crisis centers, you have to open. It's very important for uh, sexual cases, sexual crime cases. It's very important um, in in global in the world. Uh, Twenty three countries signed the convention, but but they are a little bit struggle about this. 
for instance, for instance, Bulgaria, or I mean, uh, I think uh, France. I don't know, but Bulgaria is very struggling about it because it's it's not uh, easy uh, to apply the convention into the life, but the state has to do this because it's a it's a road to uh, struggle with women, uh, violence against women. It's, it's a very, very important regulation uh, according to the, in all, all over the world. It's very important regulation. It's a European uh, Council regulation, but according, according to me, it, it's a, it's a uh, world regulation, has to be world regulation because very, uh, in, you know, very uh, similar uh, nuances. There is very, very good details uh, in the convention. That's why I am sure Turkey apply and sign that convention again. I think we are uh, over time. Thank you for a great discussion and, and conversation, Selin. And thank you for our audience also who participated over the Zoom. And have a great rest of the day. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I'm very happy <laughs> to be here. Thank you. Great. Uh, I think we can wait in uh, a few minutes till our audience leaves and uh, we can chat for a few minutes. Okay. Let me stop the recording.